Vampires used to be what zombies are today. They were initially depicted as one-dimensional monsters, then the idea was developed further and after a while we ended up with deep dramas and intrigues behind their strange yet interesting society. Many games feature vampires but the one I can think of immediately and probably most of my viewers can too is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. I'm excited about the fact that the new game from the series is in development but while it's not out yet, let's take a look at Vampire instead. The game is developed by the same studio which gave us games such as Remember Me and Life is Strange. So I was very hopeful and very unsure of what awaits me at the same time. You see while I enjoyed Remember Me, I found Life is Strange to be an interesting interactive movie but not really what I'd call a game. It's effectively a copy of the style developed by Telltale Games. So judging by this, Vampire could go either way. Before I delve deeper into it though, allow me to first address the technical state of the game. It features ultra wide resolutions off the box, so both 21 by 9 and 32 by 9 work really well, with one exception, the talking scenes. You see, when you talk to an NPC in this game, the camera zooms into their faces. In 21 by 9 you have to adjust the camera in order to be able to see who you are talking to. You can usually do that with the movement controls. In 32 by 9 there is no chance for you to see their faces no matter how much you turn the camera. This is a minor thing and I can live with it, but I wanted to mention it. It's simply because the screen is too wide and it cuts off the top and the bottom part in these specific scenes. I wish I could could say I'm done talking about the game's issues, but unfortunately we once again face a shitty console port. There are a ton of inconveniences which arise from this and I will address the most annoying ones. First of all, everything in this game is designed for a gamepad. I could have used my PlayStation 4 gamepad, but I decided to stick to the keyboard and mouse so I can actually get a feel for all these drawbacks. All of your menus have button prompts so using the mouse is often less convenient and at times not even possible. The character's movement and especially the camera have this weird feeling about them. You know how when you have the mouse in your hand and you move it, the camera in most games moves at the exact speed you move your arm. Here you actually have a different sensitivity for your horizontal and vertical movement. This is done in console games so that you don't jerk the camera like crazy when using the analog stick, but when you have a mouse in your hand it feels extremely restrictive when your camera moves much slower in a vertical motion than in the horizontal one. You can get used to it, but it is awful at first. Another instance where this is painfully obvious is when using stealth. The game has a tutorial level which tells you how to play but when the time comes to actually use stealth, the only explanation which is actually given to you is to walk towards an unsuspecting target and press F. Yeah, this game likes to use the button F as interaction instead of E. Anyway, it simply tells you walk towards the unsuspecting enemy and press it when you're behind them. As a PC player, you hold W and of course the enemy notices you because you're not really walking, you're running at them. This issue comes from the fact that the game was developed with console players in mind. You see on a console, everyone knows that in order to walk, all you have to do is press the analog stick a little bit instead of all the way and that will cause your character to walk instead of run. This is pretty much the same on every game so they don't even have to explain it in detail anymore. Nobody tells you press the analog stick gently to make the character walk, they just tell you walk over there. You know how it's done. Guess how you have to do it here on the PC? You have to realize yourself that there is a key which toggles walking because it's never mentioned in any way because the game wasn't designed for PC so this, this is just an addition for the PC which they didn't bother to explain. Check which key it is for that you go to your control settings and check which key is assigned for that. Then you can press it in order to toggle your character to walk which will allow you to walk towards your target. You press whatever button which would be F in this case to assault the target which is unsuspecting and once that is done you have to press the walk key again in order to enable your character to run normally again otherwise you'll continue to walk which really sucks because you have to press things a million times and you will often forget to turn it back off simply because what happens to a target when you sneak behind them and attack them is not that they get killed instantly but they just get stunned which enables you to do a bite attack on them and refill some of your blood meter but I'll get to that a bit later. Just the point is after you attack them from stealth you actually still have to fight them. You only get the chance to injure them very lightly and in order to fight it's always of an advantage to be able to move a bit faster than to walk slowly while while you're fighting the enemy so it's very inconvenient. These are not huge problems but they also show that developers simply didn't want to be bothered. It makes the product look less polished and it is annoying as hell. Visually the game looks nice but it does also look a bit boring. You are in London, it's the 20th century, actually the early 20th century. The place looks grim and as a vampire you are forced to roam it during the night so it looks even more hopeless. The colors are all dark and while that does give it a good atmosphere it's also visually unappealing. In terms of story the game starts off with a somewhat weak introduction 
these are literally the first minutes of the game so don't worry it's not a real spoiler of any kind in short our character is a vampire he is blinded by his thirst for blood and drinks from his sister killing her in the process he has no idea how or why he has become a creature of the night but is consumed by guilt what is interesting here is that our protagonist is also a medical doctor and supposedly a famous one so he faces a serious dilemma does he drink blood and kill or does he suffer the first and instead use his knowledge to heal people we as the player get to decide what makes this premise so great is that the world changes depending on these decisions every district of london has its own health by helping the citizens through quests as well as through healing you can improve the health of the whole district every night different npcs will get different diseases and it's up to you to administer medicine which you craft from your own materials at first i was worried that i would have to diagnose the various ailments and decide which medicine to use but it only goes as deep as having the right meds in your inventory and choosing the dialogue option to administer them talking to the npc and reading documents will let you find clues about them when you press them on these clues they will reveal more about themselves this is very interesting because it adds it's another level of intrigue to the game it also serves to make each npc even more attractive to the player since drinking the blood of any character whose secrets have been found out will yield a lot more experience than drinking from one whose secrets are still hidden from us i guess jonathan is the kind of vampire he likes to know more about his food in addition to that healing an npc will also increase their experience value so it's better to heal them before you attack them which is hilarious because you meet one they're sickly you offer them to help them out of the goodness of your heart you heal them and then you eat them or rather drink their blood and get them more experience for that and since i've mentioned experience let me tell you that this game is an rpg and as such you get to level up and unlock new skills this is done by going to sleep you may then evolve by spending your experience but it will also cause the time to progress it's an interesting idea because this is also the point at which your decisions throughout the city will show their effects. As the districts worsen, vendors increase their prices, people disappear and reappear as enemies sometimes. Should you on the other end improve the health of a district, you will see some positive effects, some of which are very interesting as well, but I don't want to spoil them because it's part of the game and I want to leave that to you. You will occasionally also see articles from some kind of newspaper showing you how your more major campaign decisions affect the world. So be good or bad the choice is yours and that choice will also determine which one of the four endings you will unlock at the end of the game however i want to criticize the game's tutorial again the first time when it teaches you how to mesmerize and drink a person's blood is actually also counted in order for you to get the best ending you are not supposed to kill anyone you should only be good so no drinking of blood unfortunately when the game teaches you to do this and i'm talking about drinking blood again it doesn't really tell you oh yeah by the way you can practice the move on this guy here but it counts if you do so and you're not gonna get the best ending. I am aware of the fact that the game is meant to be replayed and people do all kinds of fun runs such as no kill and kill everything but it felt like the game cheated me into being bad in that particular instance. It's the beginning of the game, it's the first time you're introduced an ability and the game puts an NPC who you can try it on. Every normal player is gonna do that, they will be thinking I'm supposed to do this right now so I can see how it's done. Makes perfect sense, everything else was like that just a few minutes earlier it told me press left mouse to attack well it didn't really say it like that but it told me to do stuff and a second after that i was supposed to do it so why shouldn't i do this here but if you do it you actually screw yourself if you want to get the best ending you're not gonna that's something i found out later and it was pretty annoying jonathan who by the way is our protagonist will also start changing the more he drinks blood his skin will become paler his eyes will turn red at first and then they will even become black i like it it reminds me of mass effect and how shepherd for example changed or of Metal Gear Solid the Phantom Pain where your horn would grow if you did evil things. The problem here is that the people never seem to notice the obvious evil looking vampire amongst them. It totally kills the immersion. They could have simply stated that everyone in his vicinity is mesmerized to some minor extent and does not see that or something like that it would have been okay. And speaking of breaking the immersion there's a lot of discrepancy between what our protagonist preaches and does. On multiple occasions he has shown his contempt to towards corpse looters, yet he loots corpses all the time as well. That's a cheap shot after all because we the player are forcing him to do so. But how about a cutscene where he has the most minimalistic reaction towards a vampire who is killing one of his patients in the hospital where he works. He's barely impressed by it, yet preaches to all of his colleagues who are normal humans about how some of their actions are unethical and they could kill a patient if they don't pay attention. Hypocrisy thy name is Jonathan. Another point which 
which bothered me is how the town's NPCs seem to be completely oblivious to all the monsters on the streets. This is also never explained. You will meet human enemies who are vampire hunters, lesser vampires also known as Skull, normal vampires and a few other variations which are more monstrous. These will have spawn points throughout the city and oftentimes will be just around the corner of an NPC or two. Yet most people seem to have no idea of this. It's pretty strange. There are easy ways to fix this as well. Vampire the Masquerade did a good job at it and most of the people who claim to have seen vampires in this particular game here are, are treated like they're some kind of idiots. They talk about how they saw vampires and monsters and people laugh at them more or less, are ashamed of them etc. It seems to me like developers oftentimes realize that there are these problems but they're like eh who cares, the players know that it's part of the game and that's it. Where you could easily think of some kind of excuse for this and explain it in some weird way. I don't know what, you could say that all vampires have some kind of mesmerization aura where people don't really perceive them as such and they don't attack the people because they don't want to show themselves to be vampires and then when they see you they know you're a vampire of the enemy kind so to speak of and they attack you because they know you can tell what they are. Here's a stupid explanation that I just thought up. I literally thought up of this as I am writing this. So you can be certain that there are easy solutions to these problems but developers oftentimes and this is not just in this game oftentimes just decide to ignore oh yeah the, the world's covered in enemies nobody knows it except you. You walk around and you fight stuff all the time and it's absolutely cool. It's similar to how in soul games like GTA although GTA is a bad example because the cops will chase you at times if you kill people. But in most games you can do whatever you want and you go with impunity. In Vampire you end up fighting those monsters as well as vampire hunters and our protagonist is doing a good job at it. Combat is a major part of the game. It is mostly done well. We have a health bar, a stamina bar and a blood bar. Actions cost stamina in this game, attacking, sprinting, hitting, evading, etc. Most things will make your stamina deplete so it's a good idea to invest into it. Some weapons have reduced stamina consumption or can be upgraded to have that but all weapons in general can be upgraded and they are the only types of items that you will really be using on your character other than healing items. The weapons are what you find. You don't get any other type of gear. You can also carry two types of weapons as a matter of fact, a main weapon and a secondary one. There is some variety here but not much. The main weapons are swords, saws, axes etc. The secondary ones are a bit more interesting. You can either have guns or small melee weapons which serve to extract blood from the enemy or stun them so that you can perform a bite attack which allows you to fill up your blood meter by drinking theirs. This bite attack by the way does not count towards the ending requirement I mentioned earlier. It's merely a tool to refill your blood meter. That meter might as well be called mana though because that is its function. Your spells or rather your vampiric attacks and skills cost blood to cast. Your vampiric skills are pretty awesome and quite powerful but the combat still feels a bit clunky at times especially because enemies will often not play by the rules. Some attacks will stagger them, some will have absolutely no effect and it's absolutely random too. You are left to guess how many times you can hit something before that something hits you back. The good news is that there are three difficulties that way every player can decide for themselves how challenged they want to be. I am a noob so I pick a lower difficulty. I was worried that the combat might be frustrating and since I had no idea how how complex of an RPG I'm going to be playing, I decided to play it safe. The game would show the words story mode on the side of the screen every time my character enters combat and just for your information story mode is the lowest difficulty you can pick. So it felt like it was just trying to tell me that I'm a noob and I suck. I can't imagine any other reason for this because you cannot change the difficulty once you have chosen it. Exploration is also important in this game, you can roam through the city, find new NPCs and receive many side quests from them. The problem here is that the city itself itself is actually a very closed and limited map. It's a lot like a maze and several parts are only unlocked much later in the story. I disliked that but what annoyed me even more was that many side quests would send you to places you have not yet unlocked. The issue with this is that you don't know it. The city has some gates which are locked but can be unlocked by opening them from the other side of the gate. You learn this quickly enough and for a time you suspect that every locked door is just a matter of going the long way around, fighting through some enemies and then unlocking it as a shortcut later. So seeing a locked door did not mean that this part of the game is off limits for now. No, it just told me find a way to get here. It reminded me a bit of how Dark Souls was structured where you would have some kind of a door that you can open and create a shortcut. Unfortunately Jonathan never gave me a hint when I faced a door which cannot be unlocked at this point and I just kept looking for it. I would run around for a way to get on the other section of the map 
It can be quite frustrating and is made even worse by the fact that our protagonist cannot even jump. Instead you have to look around for a marker that will appear at random places and you can teleport to that mark. Combine that with a maze like city design and you will easily be confused. Due to this you can never travel from A to B without checking the map 10 times. It all looks the same, the lack of quick travel options makes this issue a bit more obvious as well. You have to travel to NPCs to heal them from their sicknesses or talk to them because you found a clue about them somewhere else. But the other issue that I'm facing all the time is that they are not marked on your map. You have to more or less remember where they are. And I say more or less because they tend to move around a bit, which can also be annoying when trying to find them. And speaking of getting hints. Sometimes when you talk to somebody, he will ask you some sort of moral question, something like how was I supposed to act then? And you have several options to answer, but only one of these options is the correct one. The correct answer will give you the final hint for that character and you will be able to unravel their secrets. However, if you give the wrong answer, you will never get a chance to correct this. The hint is lost forever. And since the game has no quick save or quick load, even not even a manual save or manual load, it only does an auto save and that's it, there is nothing you can do to try again. That very unfair because the correct answer is never logical. It's completely arbitrary. Some characters react positively to a straight honest answer, others want you to pretend to understand them even you, if you completely disagree with what they're saying. Their behavior is almost never indicative of this though. And I've seen examples of the exact opposite where it is indicative. So it's a guessing game. Something like analyzing the heartbeat would be cool because you already have a special vampiric vision which lets you see the blood that courses through their veins and their hearts beating everything else is kind of black and white and it would have been cool if that would enable you to see how emotional they are if they tend to lie something like that you know they could have used this ability in that way at this point it's pretty much useless you only use it in some specific quests where you're supposed to follow a blood trail but ironically it can only detect the glowing blood of things that are quest related you will see blood splattered all over the place in other locations and when you switch to that vision you will not see it illuminated so it's something that is very circumstantial and rarely of any use i tried using it but it's just it was always useless and i i was wondering if it could really be a thing that is used only for a few quests but that is exactly what it is it could have been similarly used for example to analyze people as it was in deus ex that would have made it more applicable in the game and not just something that you use in the few occasions where it's necessitated on the other end i like how the game manages to hide and unveil some aspects aspects of the vampiric legends. Things such as a vampire not being able to enter a home unless they're invited or the specifics of creating another vampire. The story also develops as time passes and it actually becomes deeper and more interesting. However, the third act feels super rushed. For example, there is a love interest which feels like it came out of nowhere. While the voice actors do a good job, they can only do so much when the characters are written so strangely. The romance feels sudden and out of nowhere. It's absolutely inappropriate. I don't want to disclose more simply because it is so sudden and I feel like it would be a bit of a spoiler it's kind of a funny thing to experience but it feels completely out of place and never gets any better this is also where I want to address the music the game has a bad soundtrack for the most part of it it's either barely there or way too intrusive but always bad I don't know who composed this but their taste in music is very distant from what I like and I'm a player and they're supposed to appeal to me having said all of that let me make one thing clear I enjoyed Vampir with all of its flaws it's still fun to play. It actually felt pretty lame at first, but once I realized that I can investigate people and figure out their secrets, that I can mesmerize and kill them, that things change and my actions actually matter, then things were very different. I was hooked and I can imagine replaying this game and making different choices. It's fun and for once it works. Some characters will even become monsters or vampire hunters based on what you do to them or their loved ones. Some will disappear some will die. So should you play this game? If what you have heard has piqued your interest, then yes. However, I have to add that the game currently sells for 50 euro on Steam, which is a bit expensive for it. It simply lacks the polish to demand that price. In many ways, playing Vampir feels like playing a good indie game, not a triple A title. The price is almost triple A though, and that seems a bit overpriced. If you can get it for 30 bucks, strike. The current price should drop soon enough, especially during one of the upcoming Steam sales. Allow me to also redirect your attention to my Patreon link in the description. Since my 
my channel is still too small, YouTube has not enabled me to write messages for my subscribers here, I mean such that appear on your feed, so I will be doing it on Patreon. I will write a comment on my Patreon page whenever there is a free game available somewhere so that if you check it regularly, you can be sure to get lots of nice free games. I will also add links so you can easily access those games on the different stores where they're currently available. Also if you have too much money and want to give me some, that's also the way to go. If not, then welcome to the club my friend. No matter what happens, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it was entertaining and would be very grateful if you left me a comment. It's nice to communicate with my viewers and it motivates me greatly. In any case, thank you for watching and have a great day.